So here it is, the Volkswagen Tiguan SE for motion. And it is their newer version of what you would call, a, well, <clears throat> a crossover. It actually has a very long rear door. And that's because this market in the US gets the long wheelbase version so that it can accommodate a third row. And this one doesn't have the third row, but it has a massive trunk. And I'll show that to you right now. As you can tell, that is quite the trunk space. And I do like the fact that Volkswagen doesn't pack uh, subwoofer or amps or other electronics into this void. They've actually given you this space. So in my case, it actually holds muddy boots very well. And there's plenty of space there for actually maybe even another pair. So if you have a lot of equipment, you can always throw it on the side and you still have plenty of space. And then we actually get a spare tire and a jack and the tools that go with it. And extra space is in there as well. So if you're really, uh, well, if you're really challenged on space, you can use it. Let me just close this here. All right. So the only downside is this is not a powered trunk. And uh, what I'm gonna do is show you the rest of this vehicle. And then what I'll do after that is tell you what the price is. Cause I was wrong when I thought, oh, I know what this thing's gonna cost. I was wrong. So, I already told you about this color, habanero orange metallic. It is very, um, very bright, and the interior is very large. Obviously, there's plenty of room in here. The one thing I notice is that the seats don't have a handle to uh, retract their, uh, or to recline, and you don't necessarily need all that space so you can slide the seats forward even more. Let me just kind of get out here. I'll show you the difference. Bam. So you can actually get even more trunk space if you slide these seats forward. And obviously they do fold flat when they clear the front seats. So you have a lot of configuration options here, which is a good thing. And obviously an armrest with cup holders. It's just overall, a decent interior. We have USB charging, 12 volt and a little cubby there for, I don't know, and an air vent, but no, no climate control. And then as far as the back seat, there are no door locks back here either. So that's a good or a bad thing, depending if you have kids, I guess they can't play around with the door locks. <clears throat> Pardon me. You also have uh, a roof rack here, which I guess is good in the uh, winter when you have to go skiing or something. I hardly see, in Texas, I hardly see anything on the roof racks. So, like things like the Durango, it's optional. But here on the Tiguan, well, there you go. And of course, there's no sunroof on here, which is my complaint. But let's get in. I'll show you the rest of this vehicle. So, we have a good layout. It's kind of typical Volkswagen layout, but it's very roomy in here. I have a lot of space and in general, you'll read the reviews and people go, Oh, why didn't they have, why didn't they put in the dual clutch automatic? Why didn't they, why did they put a GTI version of the engine in here, but not the same engine and all this other stuff. And I think what it comes down to is Volkswagen is targeting the American market with this vehicle. They have a shorter wheelbase that they're not bringing to America. So what, they, what they're saying is they, they want us to have the larger version because apparently we always say these vehicles are too small. We want bigger and bigger and bigger. And this thing is quite gargantuan. However, SUVs to me are more middle of the road kind of vehicles. And the RAV4, the Highlander, the, well, let's see, the Mitsubishis, the CRVs, all of them, they're all the same to me. So Volkswagen used to stand out because they were very unique, very sort of eccentric in their own way, very German. And this time getting in this Tiguan, it's very middle of the road. And that's what people want, unfortunately. And it all starts with this transmission, this ASIN automatic, it's from Japan, and it's not a dual clutch. And the reason for that is obviously because of service cost. No one wants to take their family hauler in every 40,000 miles for a 400 to $800 service. So Tiguan is not going to do that. And Volkswagen decided 
we're going to be budget conscious. Uh, we're going to have budgets on the minds of our buyers, and we're going to just go ahead and ditch that. So that kind of logic follows through to the rest of the vehicle. Uh, you'll see that we don't have a sunroof in the back. We don't have door locks. Uh, up here, we don't have a lock on the glove box. So keep in mind that when you're looking at this vehicle, it's very roomy. It's above the GTI, in my opinion, as far as comfort. So it's better than that GTI S manual that I drove, but it's also better than the Atlas. I did not like the Atlas. I was very clear about that. Volkswagen lent that to me. I didn't own it. So those of you who have commented on that video, like Boneheads, uh, Volkswagen gave that car to me. And some of you thought, why would they ever give me another car again? Well, I'm an automotive journalist, and this is what I do. I shoot straight. So this is the Tiguan. It's better than the Golf. It's better than the Atlas. It's got lots of room back there. You don't need the third row. You can order it if you want it. The only downside is in the SE, I don't have the nav. And they do optionally have uh, instrument clusters on other models. And I'm glad I don't see it here because I like this analog look. And as far as the ride quality and everything, I'm going to show you that right now. Let me put my seatbelt on. We will avoid the annoying ding that somehow messes up the audio on my phone. We have push button start. We'll go ahead and put the foot on brake, hit that. All right, we are active. Now, one thing you'll notice is there's a button here for auto start stop. So every time I come to a complete stop, oops, every time I come to a complete stop, the engine will shut off. When I accelerate, it goes again. With this transmission, and this this is almost one of the best auto start, stop start systems I've used because it's not jerky. And when you take your foot off the brake, it immediately moves forward. In the dual clutch, you couldn't do that. And this setup is decent. I'm not a fan of auto stop start, so I'll just hit that button to disable it. You have to do it every time you get in the car, which is annoying. We have traction control, then we have this, we have different drive modes, and then we have different uh, settings because four motion. So four motion is all wheel drive. <clears throat> so all wheel drive, no sunroof, huge back seat area, huge trunk, uh, lots of USB ports, decent stereo actually. It's not even an upgraded stereo, it's the normal stereo and I like it, I like it a lot. And I was driving down the highway from Dallas to Austin to attend the truck rodeo and I was trying to guess the price without looking. And I pegged it somewhere around $32,000. Well, the window sticker's right here. Would you like to know how much it costs? 29,340. So that is quite the shock. I was actually surprised that it was a lot less than, almost 10% less than I had estimated. And if you threw in something like a sunroof and you're not gonna get leather in here, but if you threw in a sunroof and I don't know why you'd upgrade this stereo because it's decent enough, you're really getting a decent commuter car. It's just a little down on power. And I'll show you that right now. We'll just go ahead and throw this in drive and parking brake and clear so we'll go we don't have um radar cruise but we do have the auto braking collision and of course we have that six year 70 six year 72 month um what is it 72 month and 100,000 mile warranty as well i do have blind spot uh monitoring so there's a little icon that shows up in there if there's someone on my blind spot. And it's not terribly quiet or terribly loud. It's just kind of in the middle. And that's the thing about this car. It's just in the middle of the road. It's, it's bigger than the GTI. It's not as sporty as the GTI, even though it's somehow a similar engine. It's smaller than the Atlas, but it's not as gargantuan and, and, and just boaty as the Atlas. This is, a, this is like a sportier, smaller version of an Atlas. It's more, more or less my kind of thing over what an Atlas would be. And because it's bigger than a Golf and fresher than the Golf, I think it's, it's a little bit better than the Golf as well. And of course, there is an Audi Q3 coming out, which something tells me this is gonna be the platform for that Q3. And if they do that, it's gonna be a very, very good move for them.
but even on this road, it's a very smooth, very compliant ride, and I have no complaints as opposed to the Atlas. The Atlas was too boaty. It was too floaty. It was actually very insulting. It was, it was like nasty. Old American car nasty. Acceleration. I wouldn't say it's a slow car, but at the same time, I wouldn't say it's peppy. I would just say it's commuter, commuter safe. I would really love to see a VR6 on this thing and you can call it the, the Tiguan R. <sighs> that would be awesome. I think Volkswagen needs to do a Tiguan R with the VR6. That would be such a contender in the market for people who are always craving more power. There are a lot of four cylinder turbos on the market. There are a lot of hybrids on the market. And honestly, if you're looking for a six cylinder CUV slash SUV, it's really gonna have to be a BMW. Almost as if, if you're really looking for a manual, it's gonna have to be a BMW. So BMW has, uh, done a lot to stay in their market and they've almost created their own little niche again and what Volkswagen has done was was stray away from their from their status quo and they've done something here for us and that is more trunk space more legroom more everything and they've kept the price really low and I'm not going to talk about the material quality I'm not going to go into a rant about um, you know the the look and feel of everything, that's down to you because you're the one buying the car. And I think what I would do is I would sum it up by saying, would I buy a Tiguan? Yeah. If uh, my mom wanted a Tiguan, sure, she can buy one. I wouldn't tell her no. However, if she wanted something with a lot of pizzazz and, and comfort and style and like trendy tech and everything, that would be like the Volvo XC40. And if she's looking for something on a budget, um, if she was a cheap steak, then I would say, well, you would definitely want to look at the VW Tiguan. There are a couple trim levels. You can get all wheel drive. You can get front wheel drive. Uh, for the most part, you're going to get all the kind of tech you're expecting in your Audi. God, this is such a blind spot. I'm just going to go for it. Foot down and go. Even in this rain, the all wheel drive is planted. And, and again, it's good for commuting because you can kind of do some remarkable things uh, in this rain. And it's, it's forgiving. The suspension is very good. So there are also storage pockets everywhere. You know, there are a lot of cubbies and things going on. And I think if you have a need to, to have an SUV or a CUV because you have a large family and you're not just single this would work out for you very well there's plenty of headroom there's nothing to complain about and I think that's the the genius part of this car even though it's been tuned and refined for Americans I really don't have anything to complain about well maybe except for a few things um, that would be there's no trunk release button in here so if my doors are locked and I get out of the car to open the trunk uh, my keys here or you know whatever there's no way to open that trunk so that would be the only real complaint is um, getting back getting access to that back spot um, if the car is running like I was actually picking somebody up from the airport and I was like Ugh, how do I get this thing open right so I had to come in here hit the unlock button go back there whatever it's just kind of like frustrating because you're in a hurry you're in a rush and you want to get that thing open and and uh, you're looking around, like fumbling around. Of course, I drive a new car every week and I don't read the manual. I try to get used to everything without having to resort to a manual because that's how user-friendly everything should be. But in this case, I'm looking for a button that I think should exist. It should be down here. It should be over here. It doesn't exist. That's my complaint. Anything else? Uh, let's see. Any other complaint? Uh, not really, not really. The stereo is decent and the ride quality is decent. The highway, the highway uh, aspect to it was good. It drove quite well at 90 and 100 miles an hour. It was good at passing and it brakes very well. I mean, honestly, I think they nailed it here and it's worth taking a look at, especially if you are a 
RAV4 or Highlander owner or UEC and you need to get something new, I think you should definitely check out the VW Tiguan. This one is the SE trim. They have an S, which is even the lower price, which I don't think comes with 4Motion. And they have an SEL, which I hope has a sunroof. Uh, if I was to do this personally, I would do it just like this. I would make sure it has a sunroof. And I'm always a sucker for upgrading the stereo. And that's about it. As far as fuel economy, I haven't really been paying attention, but uh, that's not an accurate number because I've been messing around here on, at idle. Uh, I would expect that you would probably get around 23, 25. If we look at the window sticker, it's, it's just about accurate. Let's go here. Yep, 23, 27. Yeah, that's about right. And of course, uh, you get roadside assistance and everything else. So if you're looking for like a hassle-free, worry-free experience and you just want a vehicle that you can lease for two or three years and then turn back, but it does everything you need, you don't have to worry about it. Maybe you get one for your nanny or maybe you get one for your mom. It's easy to get in and out of because it's higher off the ground. Whatever your need is for a CUV slash SUV, the price point on this one is so phenomenal and the ride quality and the, the comfort is so incredible that after driving that Atlas and being disappointed by how old and stale the Golf is, this is a refresher. This is just, I'm not going to say it's amazing, but this is the way Volkswagen needs to go. And I hope you understand that. You're watching New Car Spin. I'm your host, Brian Grant. This is the Volkswagen Tiguan SE4 Motion. And please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I have plenty of other videos. You should definitely check out the Volkswagen Atlas one. You'll kind of get an understanding of why I don't like it. And I hope your day and your weekend goes quite well. Mine's going to be quite wet. See you later.